everyone, it's new. It's been a while. Hi guys, how are you? Let me turn off my fan. This is the first time I've been able to sit in my room with a fan off since the beginning of summer. <laughs> so I finally feel ready to sit down and, and do a tutorial. On this channel, I've done the cat beanie tutorial, the bunny slash puppy tutorial, and the fox one now. And in the fox video, I showed you how to make, insert picture on screen, the rectangle beanie, which you like gather down at the top. Um, and personally, that's my preferred beanie. But in the puppy rabbit beanie, uh, I referenced or I said that this beanie might be better to put those ears on because you can place them with a little bit more accuracy whereas the gathered beanie there's like all this sort of excess fabric at the top so i'm finally making a tutorial for that one i have the um rectangle beanie already up on the channel so i might as well do this one as well so this beanie if you're curious to know i think was probably made like i said i made it a long time ago so it's probably made with this hook which is a seven millimeter and i used this uh, brand of milky cotton um, it's a Korean brand I guess and it's about this thick <laughs> this is like a uh, crochet hook sizes uh, according to Japan they're Japanese hook sizes so anyway do with that information what you will <laughs> so this beanie is this yarn except I use two strands at the same time when I'm doing it. So usually I have two balls going at the same time and I crochet two strands together would make a slip stitch and then go in there and crochet like this. You can do this with as many strands as you want to get like a chunkier yarn. Uh, reason I do that is because I like chunkier knits and I also uh, like going fast. So if you want to go faster, use bigger yarn or double up your thin yarn. For today's tutorial, I'm going to use this yarn and I'm going to use a pretty big hook because I can. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, if you, if you like having like a soft, fluffy, floppier kind of beanie, you're going to use a bigger hook. And if you like a firmer beanie that's going to hold its shape better, then you're going to use a smaller hook. I think for this particular yarn, the smallest that I would go would be like a 6 or a 5.5, something like that. But today, just so we're not struggling and because I want to make us sort of floppier uh, beanie, I'm using this one, which is a 10 millimeter. To make this, this beanie, you just need yarn. Probably one ball. I mm, I don't know. I hope that this yarn, this is enough yarn to make a beanie because I'm gonna have to swap to another color. Cause this is, I'm just making this for tutorial reasons. It's summer. I'm not thinking about beanies right now. That's a lie. I'm always thinking about making knit stuff. I don't know. But anyway, um, you're gonna need your yarn of choice, your hook of choice, and like a stitch marker. I usually use like a little piece of um stray yarn just to keep track of where I am. So you can start one of two ways. You can do a magic circle if you know how to do that. I stopped doing magic circles because I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like doing them anymore. So I stopped. Uh, this tail is probably way too long. Let's come back this way a little bit. So I'm gonna do a, a slip knot like that. Put her on my hook and I'm gonna start off with four single crochets. So one, two, three, four. This yarn isn't very good, it's kind of unraveling. Um, so it looks like this, you've got your four stitches and then you're gonna slip stitch into the first one, like so. And now you have like a little hook, a uh, hook, <laughs> a little ring, right? So this is our tail. Now you wanna crochet over the top of this tail because um, usually when you start like a circle this way um it'll leave like a little hole in the middle if you crochet over the top of this you can pull on it at the end and it'll close that hole up for you so just keep that in mind um what i'm gonna do now is without doing any extra sort of chains or anything i'm just gonna six single crochets into this top here 
Now, the purple beanie that I showed you, I'm not really sure whether I did single crochets or half double crochets, but you know, we're doing single crochets today. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. All right, and you can see I've got this massive hole in the middle, right? Later, like I said, pull on this, we'll close the hole. I'm not gonna do it yet, just cause I wanna keep it sort of loose and easy breezy for me to like work on, right? So what I like to do is count to make sure that I'm going into the right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, this one, right? So sometimes when you join your rows together in later rounds, um, you're gonna have this pesky little stitch that's lying to you this right this is not a single crochet this is you doing a slip stitch and you're attaching your two single crochets right so you could pull it really tight to try and like get rid of it but just keep in mind on later rows there's gonna be that one slip stitch at the end that's gonna be trying to confuse you okay this uh first row this is what the first row looks like and you're gonna have six stitches in your first row so let me do like a little diagram your beanie as you work it up your what we're essentially doing is making a circle, first of all, okay? So it's a circle that is cut into six wedges. So you can see in our beginning row, we have six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, correct? So each one of these stitches is the beginning of one of the wedges that makes up our circle, okay? So <clears throat> the first row, you've got one stitch in your wedge. And that's what this say this one here right and then the second row you want to have two stitches in your wedge so that's easy enough that just means you just put two stitches like this okay third row we want to have three stitches in our wedge so you're gonna put one stitch and then two stitches so this is one two three yeah fourth wedge one stitch here one stitch here and then two stitches in your last one, like that. So we have four stitches. And we're just gonna keep doing that. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing for six. Uh, and you're just gonna keep going until the circle is big enough to cover the top of your head, basically. So if this doesn't make any sense right now, I promise, it might be helpful later on <laughs> okay that's just how my brain thinks about this so I, I, I thought maybe some other people would find it helpful to think about it this way so we're gonna get rid of our tail just going to drop it down there ignore it for now we slip stitched into this first stitch and like I said for every one of these stitches in this first row we want to put two stitches so we're gonna have one oops two well, that's not a pleasant sound, is it? So we have two stitches in this first one. Next stitch, three, four. Next stitch, five, six. Next stitch, seven, eight. Next stitch, next stitch nine. 10 and then the last one 11 12 okay so just to make sure that you're going to the right place I usually like to count back so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so we're in this first stitch here we're going to this is a really PC terrible yarn which is why this is happening but you're gonna go in there Pull through, pull through, and then tighten up your slip stitch. Okay? Okay, so at this point, we're uh, on our third round. And in our third round, we want to have three stitches in each wedge that we've created. Okay? So that means into this first stitch, we're going to crochet once, single crochet once. Oh, that sound is not good. <laughs> I wonder if I can do something about that in post. Wow. One crochet, and the next one two crochets. We're gonna increase. One, two. Oops. This yarn is really terrible. I'm really sorry that I'm using such terrible 
quality yarn. Now at this point, uh, I would recommend using your stitch marker, whatever you want to use, whether it's your uh, proper stitch marker or a safety pin or an earring or a piece of stray yarn that you've got lying around. Um, and that's marking this first stitch. In your early rows, this sort of stitch marker situation is not as important, but it will be as you get further on. You don't want to sit there and count how many stitches you've got in each row. Um, which, speaking of, uh, in your first total round here, we've got six single crochets. In the second one, we have 12 single crochets. And in our third round, we have 18 single crochets. So essentially, every row, you're adding six stitches. That's how we keep the circle going out rather than like turning into a tube. Okay, so we have, we're just gonna repeat that. We have one single crochet and then an increase, which is two single crochets into the same stitch. One single crochet, two single crochets into the next stitch. Okay. So one single crochet, and then into the next one, oops, two single crochets. One single crochet, two single crochets. Oops, one single crochet. Two single crochets. And then one single crochet, two single crochets. So like I said, this row should have 18 single crochets in it. Let's just have a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen 16, 17, 18 stitches. Good. Okay. Good job. Now this is, uh, we're going to take our stitch marker out of here. Yeah. And then we're going to um, slip stitch into that first stitch. Whoops. Like, oops. I've missed it. <laughs> Hook it through like that. Pull it through. Done. Okay. Um, at this point, maybe I'm going to pull on this. See what happens. See, there we go. Closed up, closed up the hole. Can pull on a little bit more. There's no hole at the top anymore. You can see because I've used a chunky yarn and quite a big uh, crochet hook, there's like a lot of holes in here, right? If you did not want a holy crocheted like this one, you would use a smaller hook. So like I said, I'm using a 10 millimeter. You could probably use like an eight or a seven and it would close up these holes and it would not be as um, holy. We have finished here right where we've gone one single crochet and then an increase so this time we're gonna have two single crochets and then our increase here so we're going for four stitches in each of our little wedges and then we're adding six stitches to 18 so that's 24 single crochets at the end of this row single, whoops single crochet into our first one single crochet into our second one and then an increase. So that means two single crochets into the third stitch like this. Okay. I come back and put my stitch marker in just so I don't get confused. Get some yarn. So we've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to do that again. One single crochet, one single crochet, and then an increase, so two single crochets into the same stitch. Like so. One single crochet, one single crochet, and then two into the same. Whoops. No! This yarn is really old and kind of coming apart, so that's why I'm having so much trouble with getting the hook in there. So I've got my two single crochets, right? Next one, one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two single crochets. Like so. 
one single crochet, two single crochets, and then a one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two single crochets into the same stitch. So we have three left in the row, which is exactly how many we want. One single crochet, one single crochet, and two single crochets into the last stitch. Like so. Now you can see this is starting to resemble uh, a hexagon, right? Um, so a lot of the time, if you want a perfect circle, rather than, so what we've been doing is we've been putting all of our increases into the last stitch, right? So a lot of the time what people will do is they'll have one and then they'll go two and then they'll go three and then they'll go like this four and then they'll go five and so they'll like alternate where they put the increase and that will help this look more like a circle and less like a, a hexagon right and the reason i don't usually worry about that too much is because once you get to um the sort of width that you want for your hat you're just going to start crocheting straight down and there's not going to be any increasing and it's going to look like a circle by the time it gets down here anyway right if you look at this from the top you can kind of see how it looks like a hexagon at the top right but then once you start crocheting down that just sort of disappears i don't know if that makes sense i hope it does if it doesn't make sense just ignore it <laughs> okay so we're on row five, which means that we want five stitches in each one of these wedges. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out, I'm gonna um, slip stitch these together, like so, and then straight back in, I'm gonna do one single crochet, two, three, and then you're gonna do an increase, which is two single crochets into that last stitch. One, two, right? So we've got five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. This is our first one. You can see that I didn't tighten the um, slip stitch there very much, and you can see it looks like a stitch. It's not a stitch, all right? Don't believe it, it's trying to trick you. It's trying to get in your head. Just ignore it. Okay, so we have our stitch marker, right? So row five, we have six stitches, six sections, all with five stitches in it each, which means that we're gonna have thirty single crochets at the end of this row. Okay, so let's do that together now. We've got one, two three single crochets and then an increase so two into the same stitch four five okay next one one i did not take the yarn from the center of the bowl so now i'm struggling always take yarn from the center of the bowl so what did i just do wait okay, one two three single crochets oh gosh this yarn is a mess my dudes and then an increase like so so we've got five and then one two three single crochets and an increase one two and then next one, one, two, three single crochets, and then an increase, so two into this next stitch, one, two. Okay. And then this is our last four stitches in the row, so we're gonna go one, two, Three, and then an increase in the last one. So two, one, two, like so. All right. 
So we get our, get rid of our stitch marker and then slip stitch to join the row like that. Okay. Um, row six, one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet. So we're gonna have four single crochets and then an increase. So that's six. Row six, we have 36 single crochets. Um, I'm gonna get straight into it. So we've got our first stitch there that we've slip stitched into. We're going to do a single crochet. So we're doing four single crochets this time. One, two, three, four, like so. And then an increase in this last one. So five, six. Ta -da! One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then I'm gonna shove our stitch marker into that first stitch just so we don't get lost. There we go. Okay. All right. So we've got our six stitches. So we're doing four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then an increase. Five, six. And then next one, one, two, three, four, and then increase. Five, six. We're gonna keep doing that until we get to this purple dude at the front. One, two, three, four, and then our increase. Five, six, repeating. So one, two, three, four, and then an increase. So two into the same stitch, five, six. All right, so we've got five stitches remaining in, or we should have five stitches remaining in our row. One, two, three, four. This is the last stitch in the row there, you can see. Five, six. Okay, so at this point, um, if you have an itty bitty head, <laughs> you might be done with your circle. Um, so, depending on how chunky or thin your yarn is, is going to depend on how many rows that you need to keep repeating like this. Now, they work exactly the same way. No matter how many rows you go up. When you get to the seventh row, you need to put seven stitches into your wedge. When you get to the eighth row, you need to put eight stitches, right? You just need to keep going until it's the right size for you. Like I said, I've used a chunky yarn, so I might only kind of go to maybe like this much. So that might be like nine maybe rows. Uh, but if you are using a chunkier yarn than this one, you might only need like six or seven rows or, or, or even less, depending on how big your yarn is. And then again, if you're using a much thinner yarn, then it might mean that you need to do 15, 16 rows, okay? And the way you determine this is that you're gonna take this piece and put it on top of your head. And basically, if it covers of the very top of your head, then you're good to go. Um, it doesn't need to be quite as big as you think. Like if you start, if you if you go too big, it's just gonna be hanging off. And it's like you put it on top of your head, like this little pancake of, of yarn on top of your head. And then it's sort of like protruding quite a lot. Or like, I don't really know how to describe it. I wish that I had something that I could show you. <laughs> Basically, if your little head looks like this, right? So you wanna stop kind of here. You want it to, this is how big you want your circle to end up being when you put it on top of your head, like this, okay? 
if you sort of end up your circle ends up looking like this and it's sort of like protruding over the side of your head um you've gone too big this is this is like too big because we're gonna start crocheting down like this basically and so your beanie is not going to be snug on your head it's going to be this big sort of like wind tunnel bowl on top of your head whereas if we start crocheting from here it's going to sort of be a good height for your head hope that made sense so we're going to start zooming through this a little bit more because i feel like maybe you guys are getting the hang of it all right so i'm going to slip stitch and this time i want seven stitches in my row right so i'm going to single one two, three, four, five. So we have five stitches and we're gonna do our increase here. So one, two, okay. So I have seven stitches there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's my seventh row, seven stitches. I'm gonna put my stitch marker in and I'm gonna repeat that six times so I've done it once I'm gonna do that same thing on the remaining five sides so one two three four five all right let me show you one more time one two three four five and then we're gonna increase. So we have seven, six, seven. Okay. All right, so do that one, two, three, four more times and then we'll meet back over here. Sounds good? All right, let's go. Okay, so get rid of my janky little diagram. <clears throat> we're going to slip stitch back into here. So we're on row eight, which means we want eight stitches in our, um, wedge I hope that makes sense when I say I want you to make a wedge my dears what I mean by like a wedge so in this first row there's one stitch two stitches three four five six seven right so our wedge is growing so we're on the eighth row which means we want eight stitches in our wedge so we slip stitch into this first one uh, we need six single crochets and then an increase okay so let's do that one, two, three, four, five, six, and then increase at the end here. One, two, two single crochets in the same stitch, All right? So, <clears throat> We have eight single, uh, eight crochets here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna do that for the remaining five sides. One, two, three, four, five, and then we'll come back and meet here back at the beginning. So I'm finished. I've slip stitched into the first stitch, and I'm looking at this. I'm thinking it might be big enough, and that I might be able to just start going down at this point. But I have kind of a big noggin, so this is 17 centimeters, 18 centimeters across from this point to this point and I think that this would probably fit most women's heads I don't actually know I don't I'm sitting here like I know anything I'm an expert on sizes of heads but I think I've got a bit of a big noggin so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more row so it's gonna be only like nine stitches in each wedge 54 stitches I believe all the way around so I'm gonna do that one last row and then we're going to move to the next step. Like I said earlier, you can customize it to you, to whoever you're making it. I guess if you're making it for a guy with a big noggin, then you might have to go a couple more rows. If you're using, like I said, a thinner yarn, you're probably going to have to do quite a few more rows to get to this width. Because like I said, this is 18 centimeters. I'm going to do one extra row and I feel like I might regret that because it's going to add an extra centimeter all the way around. But let's go for it let's just do it all right so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do my one more row with nine stitches so that means there's gonna be seven single crochets and then an increase so one nine okay all right i'm gonna do that five more times and then i'll come meet you back at the beginning again 
I've just come to a very exciting realization. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't see him. The camera's too zoomed in. Oh, this is Bog Shilly, by the way. Uh, and he's wearing my beanie or modeling my beanie quite fashionably here. So this beanie fits his head really, really great. This, this beanie is also for my head. Probably looks like it's too small, but uh, I don't think it's going to be. Is it going to be? Should we do, should we go to 10? I like how this is a tutorial and I'm asking <laughs> what I should be doing. I have determined that I'm gonna do one more row, which is nice, because that brings us neatly to uh, 10. So I have a neat 50, uh, sorry, 60 stitches. So I've just slip stitched in the end there. I'm just gonna do that now. So I'm gonna do uh, eight single crochets and then an increase. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna finish 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, have 60 stitches, and then we're gonna, hopefully at that point, we'll move on. I'm All right, oh, Shilly is here to model. He's so cute. Uh, I'm holding this on top of his head and I'm feeling pretty good about that. His, the size of his head is here, right? So we've landed on 60 stitches all the way around, um, 10 stitches at the end of each of our wedges. So at this point, this is absolutely the easiest part. All you're gonna do now is just start 60 stitches join at the beginning 60 stitches join at the beginning you're just going to keep crocheting down and because that, that's what essentially is going to happen you're still going to crochet down this way sort of thing um until you have the desired sort of uh size i've slip stitched into that first stitch and i'm just going to go around 60 stitches um you could count you could sit here and go one two three four five six sixty and then make sure that you have exactly 60 stitches or you know you can just hope for the best honestly if you accidentally chuck an extra stitch in there every now and then uh it's not really going to affect the shape too much so i say that because like i said this joining stitch sometimes gets sneaky and looks like a uh single crochet and you might get confused if that happens try to avoid it but if it happens who cares you know you're gonna be okay your beanie's gonna be okay your life is gonna be okay <laughs> i mean i hope it is a blessing to all of you who are watching this video i hope that your life is uh, on track and only getting better so so yeah, you're just gonna do 60 60 crochets all around you don't need to worry about increasing or decreasing or doing anything you're just gonna do all the way around um, you don't need to worry about very much at this point. This is the home stretch. This is where it gets really, really easy. So essentially, you're just gonna keep going until it's at a length. Like if you're making it for yourself, just keep trying it on your head until you're happy with where it's at. Uh, if you're making it for somebody else, it's a little bit more tricky, but um, trial and error. I sincerely believe in you and I think you will definitely make it happen. Um, like I said, don't be afraid to frog your crochet. Honestly, I think I have never started a project without frogging everything I did at least three or four times in the beginning. Because, you know, it could be a yarn and a hook size that you've used before and yet for some reason it's just not working for what you want. And that's like I said earlier, this is quite a holy crochet because I've used a thick yarn but I've also used just a very big hook. If you can get a beanie without all these little holes in it and have it like much more tightly crocheted, you just need to use a small hook. So experiment with what you've got. I highly encourage it. Oh my gosh, I did that recently. I'm working on uh, a lot of pixel crochet recently and I'm, I'm gonna try and bring it to the channel. Um, but I was pixel crocheting a phrase, which hopefully, like I said, is gonna be on the channel later. And it's a question and I didn't put a question mark. And the way that pixel crochet works is that you start at the bottom and then you work towards the top. And the question mark was supposed to be at the bottom. And so by the time I realized I would have to undo probably like, I don't know, like a hundred rows, probably not that bad, 50 rows of crochet to get back to the beginning and insert. Like basically I would have had to start from the beginning and I was just like, I don't want to do that. 
So I'm gonna figure out how to insert a question mark later. But anyway, um, as you can see, we've done one round and already that sort of hexagon shape is disappearing a little bit. So that's good to see. There was a there was a time where I used magic hoop, ho uh, magic hoops, magic loops, and uh, I staggered my increases and I counted my stitches. And if there was too many or too little, I went back and I redid the whole thing. And then I figured out it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you can just do what you like. It's your art. Okay, so I've just done one. I'm just gonna keep doing that. So that's one. Um, you just slip stitch into your first stitch. Uh, some people, to make this easier, would do a chain there, but I never bother. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. So again, I'm just going to go around 60. Uh, I'm going to keep this. Oh man, I feel like this might be too big. It's not to worry, guys. It's not to worry that this beanie is too big. I shouldn't have done 10 rows. Errors were made. It'll be a box at least being. It'll be fine. So that's two rows of 60 crochets. Like that. Alright. I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, and when it's when I get to a point where I'm happy with it, you can see it's sort of forming a shape a little bit more now. Yeah, I probably should have stopped decreasing earlier. That's my bad. I'll show you the consequences of my my hubris. Hopefully you guys are going great. <laughs> if you have any questions at this point, don't hesitate to ask. I will answer in the comments, I promise. Let's go. Let's do this. We can do it. I feel a little bit bad about making a tutorial about something that... <laughs> I haven't made one of these beatings in a long time, so I'm... That's my excuse. So this is the original beanie. This one fits me really, really well. And if you take a look at <laughs> this one, which I've folded in half here, um, you can see that it is quite a bit bigger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to frog this back to the 8th row. So I'm going to frog, this is 5 rows of just 60 stitches. And I'm going to bring it, I'm going to frog the last 2 decreasing rows so that I'm back on my 8th row. And then I'm just going to start going down from there. Ah! Uh, <laughs> this is a learning experience. I'm just, I'm, I'm showing you what happens if you make it too big. Not good, too big. I mean, I said that was gonna happen, didn't I? I, I did I not say that that was gonna happen? So what I'm gonna do, once I'm finished frogging, I'm just gonna crochet straight down and then I'll come back and I'll show you where I land. Thank you for your patience. Don't make the same mistakes that I do. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, we are finished. We're finished because I ran out of yarn. Uh, I could get some more, but this is at the moment <clears throat> like a little half cap. So where we landed with this is eight increases. So we got eight rows in and then we started going down. If we look at this, this is probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, probably 14 rows here. And that gives you this like fairly short half cap. Um, just to give you some reference, this kind of fairly thick yarn that I used with the 10 millimeter hook comes out like this. And then this tiny baby one that I did is using this thinner yarn um, and a 4.5 millimeter hook. And this is seven rows of like increasing. And then, oh, that's also about 14, sort of this way. And yeah, this one fits a 20 centimeter doll and this one fits a 40 centimeter doll and also my head, like a human head. Mr. Wolf Chan, if we do some shoving down of his ears, um, fits this beanie pretty well. My preference would be to make it longer so it's got a bigger brim on it, especially for this, like, obviously the human size one. But like I said, I ran out of the yarn, so it's just a very short little half beanie. But you just need to put some extra rows in, and that will be very easily fixed. Mr. Wolf Chan and his beanie. And yeah, it's, oh, the cat started up. Oh no. Um, yeah, I've been asked quite a few times in the comments about how to make that beanie, so I hope this was helpful. And uh, everybody have an amazing week. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, mom.